Welcome to Intermediate German Grammar, presented by the German Studies Program at Elon University. This presentation explains how the passive works and why and when to use it. We'll focus mainly on the use of passive in the past tense, although present tense usage will also be mentioned. This video complements the video on helping verb selection in the past tense. You'll want to watch that video either before or after watching this one. In this video, you'll learn three things. First, the distinction between active and passive. Second, why and when to use the passive. And third, how to form the passive, including common pitfalls. Let's begin with the distinction between active and passive. A common difficulty is recognizing when passive is being used in something you read or hear, or when passive is required when you write or speak. The best way to address that difficulty is to be conscious of the difference between active and passive. Both English and German use the active to show what somebody or something did or is doing. In grammatical terms, the subject did or is doing the action represented by the verb. The passive in both languages is used to show that an action happened to someone or something in the past or is happening to someone or something in the present. The subject doesn't do the action. The action is or was done to the subject. In this example, the Berlin Wall did not build something. Rather, the Berlin Wall was built. The action happened to the subject, therefore passive is required. Most or perhaps all ideas in the passive can also be rendered in the active, as you see here. In both sets of sentences, the same event is described, namely the construction of the Berlin Wall. The difference is that the first set of sentences is in the active, and the second set is in the passive. Some theories of language and grammar use the terminology agent and goal. In the sentences you see here, one of which is in the active and the other in the passive, the agent is the same, namely the East German government. In grammatical terms, the East German government is the agent because that's who did the action of building the wall. In other words, the East German government has agency here. In the active, the agent is rendered as the subject of the sentence. In the passive, it's rendered as a prepositional phrase. That, by the way, means that you could drop the agent in a passive sentence because prepositional phrases provide supplementary information and aren't required to constitute a sentence or a clause. The goal in these examples is the Berlin Wall. Remember that in grammatical terms, goal means the thing or person acted upon. The action, in this case building or constructing, is directed towards the goal, the Berlin Wall. The difference between the two sentences is that in the active, the goal is rendered as a direct object, and in the passive, it's rendered as the subject. Which brings us to our next point. Now let's explore why and when to use the passive. But first, let's debunk a common myth. You may have heard at one point or another that you should avoid passive, but that's not quite right. Sometimes, passive is exactly what you need. Take again the example of the Berlin Wall. If we want to emphasize the wall's construction, we should use passive. Here, the emphasis is on the wall itself. Notice that the agent is entirely absent from this sentence. If, on the other hand, we want to emphasize who built the wall, active is called for. In this sentence, the emphasis is on who was responsible for building the wall. Here's another example. Once I read a very good paper, written by a student, on stereotypes about the Germans. On your screen is a sample of what she wrote. My recommendation to the student would be to rewrite the sentence in passive. That takes the emphasis off of who is doing the stereotyping and puts it on the Germans themselves, which is, in the end, the point of the sentence. 
Now that you understand the difference between active and passive, and the situations where you might encounter or use passive, here's our final step, how to form the passive. In German as in English, the passive is formed with a helping verb and the participle of the main verb. If you need a refresher on helping verbs or participles, those videos are in the playlist. As you see on the screen, for sentences in the past tense, the selection of the helping verb indicates whether you're dealing with active or passive. Werden is the helping verb that indicates passive, while active in the past tense is indicated by the helping verb haben or sein. Note the difference between passive in English and German. English uses the helping verb to be, while German uses the helping verb werden. Keep that difference between English and German in mind and try to avoid the common mistake of using war or ist or other forms of sein when forming the passive. Native speakers of English often make this mistake because they incorrectly assume that German passive is formed just like English passive. Correct formation of the passive in German requires the helping verb werden. Another reason English speakers get the German passive wrong is not quite understanding the difference between passive on the one hand and descriptions on the other, because English uses the verb to be for both functions. Remember that the passive indicates some kind of action. The sentence at the top of your screen uses passive to tell us that the wall was built. That's an action, not a description. The sentence below, in contrast, uses the verb sein to set up a description. Here the sentence is telling us how long the Berlin Wall was, which is a description, not an action. Here are more samples comparing the passive in English and the passive in German. Again, the difference is that English uses some form of the verb to be, plus the participle of the main verb. German, in contrast, uses some form of werden, plus the participle of the main verb. That concludes our presentation. Thanks for watching. Be sure to visit us on the web or follow us on Facebook or Twitter.